This is just a short clip of a full video that has basically been sanitized so it can fly under the radar on YouTube. If you want to see the entire conversation that we had or the entirety of the commentary that you're watching, please go to one of my other platforms. One of the best places to go is alisonmorrow.locals.com where you can become part of my editorial board and pose questions ahead of time for interviews. You also get exclusive live streams there as well. But whatever you do, don't stay here on YouTube. The full truth is somewhere else. Very happy to have Liam Madden here. He is running for what I learned is the only uh, seat for Congress for the House of Representatives in Vermont. And uh, you have a very interesting story, which uh, maybe we should just start there. You're a Marine Corps veteran, mm -hmm. um, but you also started a pretty big anti-war movement of, of post-Iraqi or Iraq war veterans. Should we start there? Should we just start like you as a veteran? I don't know. There's so much to, to talk about, like, because now you're running for Congress and you have this whole interesting side to you in that regard. And uh, I, I guess let's just let's let's start with the veteran side of things. I think I think that's the interesting thing. Let's start with the anti-war stuff. All right. So back when this was a thing and I was in the news about it and stuff, so I'd always have to start with, well, why are you anti-war? Why did you join the Marines in the first place? So I need to start there, which is um, I joined in 2002 and went to basic training in 2003. And then while I was in basic training, they invaded Iraq. And I thought to myself, well, this might end rather quickly. The last war in Iraq did. And uh, sure enough, you know, things started to unroll, which everybody, you know, I wasn't in any special position to learn things. I just saw weapons of mass destruction weren't there. I never really fully trusted that they would be. And then I eventually ended up having to go to Iraq. And I, at this point I was, I was pretty, ideologically opposed to it. I did not think it was a necessary war and I, I kind of distrusted the Bush administration. And um, by the time I got orders to go to Iraq, I I thought maybe I should desert. Like that's how strongly I feel about this. Like I'm, I'm willing to like ruin my life, which is one of the consequences of deserting an active duty military post. Actually, I think death is one of the possible consequences. And um, yeah. But I was stationed in Japan and I, 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 I couldn't actually do that. Like I couldn't speak Japanese. I had just gotten there. Uh, I didn't have a passport. And then there was a the whole other emotional side of like these other people in my unit kind of depend on me being there. And that would be something that, like I, there's so many reasons why I can't desert right now. And so I ended up going to Iraq and um, I didn't have a horrific time with it. I, there was a couple scary instances, a couple really sad instances. Um, but I pretty much came back untraumatized, thankfully. Um, but pretty affirmed in my opinion that what we were doing there was not helping anyone. It was 2004 and 2005. So it was kind of just after the Iraqi resistance, the Iraqi people realized the Americans aren't leaving. <laughs> um, and I just could picture myself being in their shoes, being a young person, seeing these these foreign soldiers on your streets and having a lot of understanding that I would probably be in their position if I was in their position. Um, and more, more than anything, I was just pretty disgusted with the political leadership that, that brought us into a situation where people's lives were being ruined left and right. I saw, you know, innocent civilians get um, machine guns fired into their car. And it wasn't like some asshole. It was some scared 18 year old kid with a machine gun in his hand that was trying to do the best thing he could do at the moment. And, you know, it's a horrible situation. So I came back from that pretty discouraged and upset. And this turned to be 2006 and started thinking what I could do and feeling like if I don't do anything, am I okay with that? for myself? Am I like the good German in the 1930s in Germany? And I couldn't deal with that. I couldn't deal with being the good German. So I started organizing. Well, the real story is I went to go get a beer <laughs> with a friend of mine who was stationed somewhere else. And I was stuck in traffic and I called him up and I said, so what are we doing tonight? And he said, um, well, I saw this flyer for this anti-war thing. Uh, they brought this professor into town, uh, like a history professor, and he's talking about the Vietnam anti-war movement. And so we go to this event and I met that professor and I met this, this uh, Navy sailor who was 
way old, you know, it's like most people join when they're 18. He joined when he was like 28 after he'd been to college, after he'd been like, you know, a lifetime of a political organizer. And his name was Jonathan Hutto. And he was really radical and really smart. And uh, he's the one who brought the professor to give that talk. And Jonathan and I had hit it off and we talked about like, what can we do that is a protest to the Iraq war that is not going to um, get us killed or, you know, imprisoned or anything. And uh, what we came to was, well, it's illegal to protest in uniform. It's illegal to like get people to sign petitions. And there was a whole list of things you couldn't do. But the one little sneaky loophole that we found was, well, we could, there is a protection for service members writing their Congress people. And so we just gathered as many of those petitions to Congress that we could. Uh, we call it the appeal for redress. We only got a couple thousand, but we got a lot of attention. We got uh, 60 Minutes, New York Times, and Keith Olbermann, and you know the whole the whole circuit. Um, and that was right in my last year in the military. And right after that, it was just became my whole reason for being. And I became uh, part of the leadership of the organization Iraq Veterans Against the War. And that defined like the first part of my my adult life it was like this launch from these two extremes i joined when i was 18 so by that time i was doing that i was probably in my early 20s this video is brought to you by glasses wine and coffee but let's talk glasses first real fast if you are looking at devices all day long like i am you definitely need some blue light blocking technology and i wear the blue light glasses at betterspectacles.com if you go to betterspectacles.com slash allison right now you can get the same glasses that i wear while i'm editing and while i'm checking out your story ideas but if you are a progressive lenses wearer you will really get some relief with this company again better spectacles com slash Allison. They will give you 61% off their progressive eyewear right now, plus free handcrafted Roden stock frames. Roden stock's been around for 144 years. They have a culmination of 10 years of biometric research to customize these lenses for you. And the result means more energy, no neck strain, vision up to 40% better at intermediate and near vision, which also comes with blue block technology that is at least a decade ahead of others. If you are on your computer all day, these are a must. And they report that the vast majority, 98% of people who wear them recommend them. And that includes me. Like I said, I wear these frames. And so does my husband, who has suffered traumatic brain injury from explosions and gets migraines because of his eyesight issues. He also wears these lenses. So go check out betterspectacles.com slash Allison. Schedule a teleoptical appointment right now. And again, get 61% off their progressive eyewear plus free handcrafted rodent stock frames. If you're looking at the world right now like I am thinking I need a drink, then you should go to allisonwinepromo.com. That's allison with one L winepromo.com. You'll get 50% off of my favorite Mulbacks from Argentina, one from a very high altitude vineyard, almost 9,000 feet, which gives that wine a very robust, unique flavor, but also one from the oldest vineyard in Argentina. And another one that comes with this trio is uh, a wine where they use natural fermentation. These are not wines you can just go out to the grocery store and get. They're very unique and you will get 50% off of them. Very high quality wines, like I said, plus 50% off shipping. So go to allisonwinepromo.com. Have a toast to free speech and support my work while you're at it. You'll see the video I'm going to show you of Jeremy. He's like, he's, he pretends to be the, <coughs> the chief of Raytheon. And he's like, we're going to make war gay. War is going to be so gay, you know? And it's so, what do you think about this topic in particular? And you know, I mean, you could talk about it in, in, in relation to defense spending, but I'm just curious. Like the, what, these, this sort of push from, the military, the Department of Defense, these other federal agencies, FBI, CIA. What do you think about the these commercials and just the messaging that's been coming out about, like, no, we're you know we're totally down with with all these things. Like, if you have two moms or whatever color your skin is, like, we love you, we'll hug you. We're we're just we're just a family. I'm just, I'm just curious what you think about that messaging, where that's coming from, and what it's doing. Um. Well. It, it, I, I have to say this makes me laugh. Um, I was kicked off of Facebook last year, forever. Um, and <laughs> the last thing I posted, I don't think this is what did it. I think it was generally just like the algorithm saying he's a wrong thinker based on a whole history of stuff. Um, the only thing that I ever said that was, that was actually flagged as misinformation was a CNBC article uh, covering a press conference of the WHO. But um, the last thing I posted was the meme where it's two 
images of the same exact plane bombing some country. And there's, you know, a big military intimidating bomber and there's a whole bunch of bombs spilling out of the bottom of it. And it just says Republicans on the top of it. And then the one underneath it says the same plane just with like a Black Lives Matter thing and a rainbow flag and like rainbow. all this like virtue signaling stuff. And it says Democrats. <laughs> I remember that meme. Yeah. Yeah. So what what's the deal? Like, did okay, so we were talking earlier about how a lot of the journalists that I know like they they think this is that what they're saying, which the public look at it, like what is coming out of your mouth? They they think that it totally makes sense. So you think the people who are pushing this messaging campaign, like they think it makes sense and they're just shocked that that not everybody loves it? Oh yeah. I'm sure they're shocked that not everyone loves it. Uh, except the, or they'll just write off people who disagree with them as as deplorables. Are you familiar with the guy Eric Weinstein? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he says his hypothesis of why wokeism is um, adopted by this kind of security state or generally establishment figures is that it's the cheapest way to get votes, right? Like to be making concessions on any sort of policy grounds, it could costs the owning class of this country uh, way more money if they were to like, you know, support workers cooperatives or you know more economic share for the middle class and, and working class um that costs them but to just speak about it in the language of oh they're you know they're against oppression meanwhile they'll just you know put a minority person in charge of the department of defense to continue the same exact policies it's like it's just the cheapest way for them to get votes. <laughs> and I don't think that's the full story, but I think there's a fair amount of explanatory power to that. Okay, I am going to show you this video. Please let me know if you can't hear it, okay? Again, this is Jeremy Kaufman, and uh, if you wanna go check him out, Jeremy Kaufman on Twitter, at Jeremy, K-A-U-F-F-M-A-N. Here we go. Picture this, innocent people in the Middle East, they're having dinner. A bomb's dropped on their house and they're all killed. What's the problem with this? It's being done by white men. I am Jeremy Hoffman, Chief Diversity Officer at Halliburton and Canada. <laughs> It is time to diversify the murderous military industrial complex. <laughs> we need to make the nukes gay. And that's why I'm running for office. Like my fellow Democrats and Republicans, I will support every war. I will support stealing billions of dollars from Americans to kill innocent people. But we are going to make it so gay. It will go down in the history books. We will say never have so many genders and so many races killed innocent people. Let's bomb Yemen, but let's make sure a rainbow of skin colors are dropping those bombs. These are gonna be the gayest, transest murders the United States has ever performed. That's what I stand for as the Chief Diversity <laughs> Officer at Halliburton, and that's what I'll do once elected to the United States Senate. I'm Jeremy Kaufman, and I'm gay for this message. I'm serious. I, and I think, I mean, he is, as far as I, he has a page, I'll show you in a second. Yeah, that was great. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, no, he nailed it. That's all I think about it. He nailed it. That's, that's, that is my answer to your question. Like, why do they do this? <laughs> Just to, to gloss over the fact that it's atrocious. So this is his page here. Jeremy Kaufman, Leadership for New Hampshire, Libertarian for Senate. It kind of gets across the point that I hear a lot of people making, which is, and I, I kind of think sometimes that's how, that's how things work, no matter what the topic is, that 
the message that we're fed to argue about as people is one that is is almost meant to keep us arguing at the surface level and not not focusing on what we really need to discuss. Like I, I don't know if you notice that, but I, I I always get a little wary and skeptical when whatever the topic is, there seem to be very clearly delineated sides that like the vast majority of people are at each other's throats about. I'm looking for what is the other thing that really needs some focus here. And are we just like chickens that are just put together in small pens and just, and sort of allowed as the public to peck at each other on safe topics, because that distracts us from looking at topics that really need our concern. Mm, Yeah. It's the, the hidden agreements of the two parties and they will allow debate. That's what the Overton window is, right? To allow debate on acceptable topics, but to do that, to almost intentionally obscure the topics where they they actually agree, which his video makes the point brilliantly. War is one of the topics where the Democratic and Republican Party almost always agree. Uh, They also almost always agree. I've never heard anybody from either party question the grow forever balloon debt uh, business model of our economy. That's just an unquestioned thing. And the last thing that they really love to never talk about is uh, that any any third party or uh, force of independence in this country would threaten the two party stranglehold. So like they love war <laughs> together. That's that's a, uh, an assumption that they share. They love uh, being in charge and they love uh, you know the unsustainable model of the economy. So uh, a good example of that would be immigration, right? Like you're you're allowed to be for the wall or against the wall. You're for the kids in cages or against the kids in cages or however they want to frame it. But where do you hear anybody talking about what is the American foreign policy that is creating life so unbearable in these other countries that forces immigration in the first place? That's like one of the underlying causes that is there clearly, but isn't allowed to be part of the discussion. Liam, thank you so much. Um, Other than your website, uh, which I'll show again, right now is there anything else you want to say everybody go to rebirthdemocracy.com check them out uh anything else just big thoughts on you know why you're running what you hope to accomplish or just or just any you know (laughs) your favorite sourdough recipe anything like that before we head out um so yeah after i was in the anti-war movement for a long time i got burnt out of it i got burnt out of being against and that being my operating mantra for life um so Ever since then, I've started thinking about what something creative that I could do in life that wasn't just being against what I didn't like. And from that time on, I, I had every email that I've ever sent has this quote on the bottom. It's a guy named Buckminster Fuller who thought a lot about how to design civilization and, and objects better. He was a designer. He said, if you want to change something, don't fight the existing reality. Build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So that's what I'm trying to do. Need to splash some cold water on your face? Well, then you need a hot cup of coffee to make it through the rest of the day, like me, probably. So go to TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison, TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison, and choose from a wide variety of USDA-certified organic Nicaraguan roast. These are high-altitude coffees. And the CEO and founder of the company lives right there in Nicaragua, where they grow, harvest, and roast the beans. I drink this coffee myself. I can do a test to it that... It keeps me looking young and sounding young and having all kinds of energy the day after I drink my AllisonWinePromo.com, of course, as we already discussed. So go to TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison. Pick from the wide variety of roasts. They have light roasts. They have dark roasts. And if you're a tea drinker, they do have a Keturah tea, which is tea made with the fruit around the coffee bean. It's really good. It actually tastes just like tea. I like to cold brew mine for 24 hours. Again, TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison. Support my work and have a nice hot cup of coffee while you're wondering, what is this world coming to?